Hello there, my name is Lanius and well, my previous video about uh, stable distros being so good that the rolling ones are maybe not really that needed and uh, being very, you know, uh, very positive about OpenSUSE. Well, <laughs> it was a few days ago and it already aged like milk because, yeah, as you might see or not, it's some newer GNOME and also <laughs> I'm no longer on OpenSUSE as you can see it's Arch the same I was so you know <laughs> quick to joke about but it turns out when I don't know what <clears throat> what to do with my system or with my computer, I just install Arch. <laughs> anyway, why did I do this? So the main reason, I mean maybe not main, part of the reason was that I finally got to test 0G which is 0 Linux with GNOME so 0 Linux is a Arch based distro with some nice uh, desktop and some tools uh, anyway this video is not about 0 Linux it's about why OpenSUSE <sighs> isn't really that good so I already were talking about micro OS give me a moment so I'm not going to repeat myself but honestly I missed a few things I'm not sure if I even finally got to talk about it or not because I of course was rambling but in micro OS in general in OpenSUSE Tumbleweed the same the GNOME 44 didn't work that well I mean it had some graphical glitches in some places uh, the pop shell wasn't working which as you can see it works here actually never on any other distro I had pop shell work this good usually even if the if it was working at all and usually it was with some older versions of GNOME but you couldn't really configure it I mean the uh, key bindings from pop shell that should be possible to configure they weren't anywhere in GNOME you had to go to the deconf uh, editor and yeah as you can see I've changed <laughs> one binding there because I'm not sure if it was uh, in the configuration and I just knew that I have to go there maybe I didn't need to but yeah but here most of the key bindings are configurable which isn't the case in OpenSUSE which has an official package of pop shell let me show you with Tumbleweed here. Ah, yeah. Jesus Christ. 
why it doesn't want to start start network default <clears throat> so another little thing here I've encrypted the drive right so I have to enter the passphrase which is fine I do enter my super secret passphrase <clears throat> Disk is being decrypted, and here we go. <clears throat> and what is this? Why do I need to decrypt the drive again? To be fair, it wasn't an issue on micro OS but it is on tumbleweed but also it was never an issue on any distribution why display that's wrong uh, resolution it was never an issue on any distribution that uses Calamari's installer. It just isn't. So, oh yeah. I wanted to show that it doesn't work, but it is here only because I've installed it. I've installed it manually. Let me disable this, let me remove it, because it's user installed, so I can do this. And now, let's become root, and search for pop shell. Jesus Christ, yes. <sighs> That's another weird thing. I just want to search in zipper. I don't need to do any changes, but it still is blocked. So now I'm going to wait. Because it's I don't know what the fuck is doing. I didn't intend being angry. Yes, it's updating flat packs right now. I didn't intend really to be angry while talking about it, but as you can see, I'm already a little irritated. Also, it's not like the default look of Tumbleweed, because I added some extensions, as you can see, because I was I was just testing something. Because I was thinking about switching from OpenSUSE Leap to Tumbleweed, but we will get to Leap. Uh, in a little moment <clears throat> or not a few moments later also why flatpak update is blocking zipper oh it's not anyway so as you can see there is 
the extension packaged for the system so you would think there's no chance it doesn't work right there's no chance it's going to work for sure okay it's not here because i need to what was the key binding i need to restart the shell okay it's wayland so i need to log out <coughs> So now it should be there, it is there and it's incompatible with current version of GNOME. So if this package is in the official repository of OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, in the same official repository is the current GNOME version, the current version of GNOME, it's obvious, right? It's, it's there. So why in the same repository is this stupid package that doesn't work? Why is it here? Why isn't it updated? It's not like PopShell is not working. Actually, I was thinking that maybe, you know, uh, PopOS is doing their cosmic thing. They're not really um, updating too much. At least I thought that, that it is the, the case. That's why the PopShell is not working with the newest version of GNOME. But no, it works. It works perfectly. But it's, it's either not packaged properly or... It's just some old version here. Then why is it here if it's not working? This is also weird to me. Why ship? It was already already there, installed in the desktop. An extension that doesn't work. But I don't really care about it. I always get rid of the stop icons. But why why is it the case of course in open the leap there wasn't such a problem the package the packaged uh, version works so and yeah so the extension doesn't even work so I I can't verify if the key bindings are there, are like in the package. Like, uh, I, I'm not entirely sure, but it's like some schemas for GNOME with this, you know, configuration paths that they are then available just, just to configure in the key bindings. If they're not installed, then they're not there. Even if they are added uh, to the uh, to the deacons, if there is no like the schema for them, they won't show up in GNOME configuration. So I guess it requires some work there. I guess, which wasn't done, I guess. So, let me see, I uh, have some notes there. <coughs> so yeah, PopShell is, I don't know why it, it, it's even there, right? The next thing 
is the encryption which I already shown you. No, no, I don't want to power off. Because I actually can show you everything I need here. So, with the encryption thing. I actually have fixed it on my Suze Leap before. Because to set it up properly, you need to add uh, add some decryption key to the uh, initial RAM disk, and yeah, that's all. And you have to run some commands. It's not very complicated, but may feel a little scary because you like changing some things like uh, setting permissions to boot partition which seems scary and also seems like it could be done by the installer and you know it is being done by the installer if you use calamaris but apparently not when you use yast at least on tumbleweed or leap because on micro os it works fine of course I'm not going to run through the installer again because I already shown you the installer and it's pretty much the same and yeah so another thing uh, I really mm, feel like my integrity is so great if in one video I'm kind of praising the distribution and a few days later I'm bashing it but here we are so let's go there right it's here so this is the one nice handy way of installing uh, packages on OpenSUSE I mean it's like you search on the website and stuff, it's a little windowsy, let's say. Or maybe if you're into app images, it's also similar. But let me uh, search for something. Let's say. Okay, but I guess Zoxite is uh, in the official repo for repo for Tumbleweed. Yeah. <coughs> mm. Oh, I know. If I can type. Here it is. Lazy git isn't. Let's show experimental packages. But I'm not really sure if I haven't already installed it. I didn't so we can go and click one click install seems so nice right so I open this here goes yast here's nice <laughs> description of lazy kit which is a really great program by the way and what do we have here Okay, I guess this will work because these are like the real repositories. So of course when I want to show you that something doesn't work, it will work this time. <coughs> so we might need to go to leap after all and see some interesting stuff as you can see it added the needed uh, repositories and it installed lazy git so it went quite well honestly but mm, wait 
I want to move this there and let's let's open leap mm, where did you go here you go <laughs> we try doing exactly the same thing on open suze leap which is you know stable so you would think there won't be any problems right and, and yeah so this worked surprisingly well mm, what else could there be hmm I don't know why the scrolling doesn't work here, but that's like besides the point. Okay, it works. Weirdly. Oh, I know, I know why. That's why. Anyway, let's see if... Leap booted. Of course, we have this uh, same situation here. Here we are. So let's try the same thing. And why? Uh, software. I mean, there are some other packages. Um, what was the other package I needed to install from experimental packages? Not entirely sure. But also, by the way, it's not community package. It's experimental package, so it's like maintained by SUSE but it's not re re released yet right so you would think there's nothing weird going to happen right there's some little uh, utility there which is like it's uh, it's besides the point what this utility actually is it's like as you can read, smarter CD command, okay? Whatever. And here the problems begin. So we actually want this repository, but for some reason, all these other repositories are also added. But well, good thing, okay. Literally named to be removed, but it's being added here. Alright, there's a lot of software there, you can install it, so why not, let's go, let's do one click install, it's, it's so easy. <laughs> what happened here? Repository type cannot be determined. What's going on? Let's copy this address. Let's try again. Uh, okay. Then I guess no. And there's another one. Another one. Another one. Another one. Another one. Another one. Okay. Another one. okay. 
and that's it there was an error with this with these repositories let's let's see let's see what's happening here it's no longer available hmm. maybe a folder higher nope maybe a folder higher nope higher and there it is but there's no GA or anything there's CA wait a moment Is this a typo? <laughs> Wait a minute. If I paste this here, but I replace G with C. Oh, okay. It would be, <laughs> would be too funny. Okay, no, it's, it's, it's totally other structure. Whatever. Maybe. Anyway. So, these repositories don't exist. Okay, it doesn't work. So let's finish. Let's. But. Even though it failed, some of the repositories were added, and there wasn't. Re and they what? They wasn't. They weren't removed so I thought when I was trying this the first time I tried to install Zoxite because maybe maybe enough of the repository was added and as you can see so many errors with the refreshing and also Zoxite literally has no dependencies then why <laughs> why I needed to add all the fucking repositories here we are and now I do some like typical thing you do with your package manager zipper up and this shit is coming up every time also there's another thing some of the packages have newer versions in this other repository I added <coughs> which also is very fun you would say let's go to yast repositories and here we go these repositories they don't exist and we need to manually disable them but do not remove them because if you're going to one click install again something which might want these repositories it's better to already have them disabled so they won't so that the one click install will actually work okay so let's do that again and yeah there's some other repository that's expired or something Try that again.
So, with a little bit of work, we are able to make one click install work this time. Huh. I wonder, how about lazy git? Experimental. How experimental is it going to be? Oh boy. Aren't these repositories we already had? But as you can see, what the fuck is going on here? So my point here is <sighs> if you imagine that there's whoa, so much stuff in the SUSE software page here and it's so easy with this one click and shit. It's not so easy as you can see. Even though it will add this all of these freaking repositories. This update, this installation won't work. And I would need again go uh, to the terminal. What am I doing? To the terminal. check which are the broken repositories and remove them unless I want to have a wall of errors every time I run my package manager which I don't <coughs> so it's not very nice and I wonder why I mean uh, I know that OpenSUSE lib is like being discontinued quite soon, as soon as they push out ALP, but come on, if it's your stable distro, then maybe it should actually be, I don't know, good? I mean, of course, for some basic things like office work and assuming that you're only installing some flat packs, then you're fine, I guess. But it's pretty underwhelming. Yeah, so I already said about this about the tens of repos with some basically dead ones where did this window go? I might have closed it while by talking <laughs> anyway so lost my train of thought yeah so maybe maybe all of all these many sources of software should have at least work I mean I, I wouldn't be mm, very you know harsh about mm, a community package is not working but okay these are experimental packages they understand that they could be broken, the programs would not work, but why the freaking one-click install they provide, why they even bother providing it and they put some 
crap in it that make it not work and then <laughs> make it like <laughs> make it worse again broken links broken repositories you have to clean some old repository that you would better just remove and actually they have some updates I wonder if it's because of some backports repository or what but I don't want to do this I want to try to install lazy git now I don't think any of these packages, except for lazy git, really come from any of these additional repositories, but I guess, okay, maybe this devil go language repository depends on some other repository, but, but I, will, I will be, okay, I will be even fine with all of these repositories if there weren't some dead links in there. Because it's just, I don't know even. So anyway, I guess the uh, open SUSE lib already had its beating. Let's let it rest. <coughs> so let's go back to Tumbleweed. Because I have another little thing to say here. So, one click install worked, it's great, it's definitely you can see that OpenSUSE lib, they don't really give much care about it, because in Tumbleweed, things work, it's fine, it's quite fine, even though the disk encryption could work like it just works in calamaris oh another thing with leap but i guess you can uh, you can ex expect that that the packages would be quite out of date but gnome 41 really it's I mean, it wouldn't be a big deal if not the other weird things. And in the end, I realized that maybe I could just use a rolling disk draft. After all, install everything I need. And I really considered Tumbleweed, but but the problem is. install everything I needed like the lazy git I still need some additional repositories let's take a look I'm not sure how much I was doing on this virtual machine but, but as you can see um, So yeah, this repository is added for sure. I'm not sure if any more of these are added. But if any package is missing, like you know the lazy git, I'm sure you could find some packages that wouldn't be in the main repo that you may want to install, especially if you are like doing some more minimal more customized desktop 
not just GNOME with some uh, with some uh, extensions, right? <coughs> then you would need to add some repositories there, and then. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I know what I have done. For somehow, for some reason, I don't know what I was installing there. But I added this GNOME backports, GNOME factory, I don't know why. I don't remember, I was just experimenting on this VM. But anyway, as you can see, some stuff is added here. And then you may start to wonder about the priorities as you have seen on OpenSUSE Leap there become problems with updates maybe in Tumbleweed not really because the base packages are quite new okay I mean a lot of them are new but also some of them are not really that up to date I mean they are like way behind Arch other and are just like Arch sometimes Tumbleweed is even faster than Arch with shipping like okay KD it, it, it is literally the, the the one case I know of so maybe maybe it's really not that fast but I know for a fact that you for some less like popular packages like you know not a a like a f flagship desktop environment you may need to wait a moment to get the newest one okay and apparently some tools you need to add some repositories and I already said that it's quite it can create some problems with all of this with more repositories more risk of some weird conflicts especially on the stable distro maybe not as much on Tumbleweed but still and this is exactly the one of the main reasons why I I decided that anyway I was always doing creating a I mean always on micro OS and on leap I was creating this distrobox container with Arch Linux to install the newest development uh, stuff <coughs> for myself, for my work, whatever. And then why would I even bother with Distrobox if I can just install <laughs> Arch Linux and just use it normally? It's really better to use Distrobox um, to use some like single programs like I don't know I need it is like a real life thing I need an older version of something like older version of PHP interpreter to do something to test something and my current distro has only the newest one so I can just spin a, a Distrobox container with with Debian, with whatever, with some older version of Debian, and have literally what I need. It's like a few tools. I can export it. I can use it. <laughs> but if I like move my main development environment to this Distrobox. It creates some hustle every time. Like I open a terminal, so it's either going to already open in this box, 
so I don't have like access to my host. I need to do something like uh, of course there is a command that allows that allows uh, running a command from host. Like not most uh, comfortable way of doing that, I guess. If you could just use your system normally, avoid issues like the distro box has like its own terminal kind of i it's hard to tell to tell it's like you know some intermediate um, shell which is um, in the middle like in the middle of your actual terminal and the containers shell and sometimes especially with pop shell it doesn't resize correctly when tiled and I have you would need to resize the window a little then it will go back to the to the tiled size and then the actual uh, terminal the text you know will resize to the right size so like say you are using vim in this terminal so it would have like a only a part mm, only a part of the screen let's say I have a pop shell and it starts this window why doesn't it work why does it tie oh Jesus Christ okay let's say it starts maximized but then like this part of the like the size of the terminal by this throw box is like this okay so I only have my program here and until <coughs> I resize the window and it's not a problem with terminal emulator I checked it it's a problem with this throw box and because of that I couldn't like start terminal with my preferred shell from inside the container I would need to start the host shell then run then go into the, the distrobox container <coughs> maybe it's not much but it's quite irritating also I would need to have tmax inside of this container <coughs> otherwise it would do weird things but then also I can't really comfortably run a tmax session on host because the session runs in the container so I would need to specifically start the host shell in every like tmax window <coughs> which ultimately make me use arch again and yeah i was so positive about suze but i kind of lost my sympathy for them also maybe just maybe after what happened with red hat recently maybe you should mm, turn more towards like uh, community maintain these draws not like the corporate ones like Red Hat and open SUSE for the fact because you know how uh, corporations really care about communities right about normal people I almost <laughs> I almost <laughs> have shut down the system because <laughs> I was like oh I'm in a VM whatever and uh, it would be interesting especially if uh, the recording <coughs> wouldn't get like corrupted or something anyway I think I've said everything I wanted that's all
I'm not really sure if I myself really like this video because usually I just don't want to go and shit on something but it's not really good I mean micro OS was fine it had some problems but overall it's it was kind of okay Tumbleweed, I haven't really daily driven Tumbleweed, but kind of micro OS is Tumbleweed, so maybe it would be fine. But ultimately, if you're into it, like using newer software and using a lot of maybe not that standard software then I don't think there is <coughs> something really better than Arch maybe also Nix and that's mainly because you just don't need to add like 10 additional repositories to install everything you need you have the Arch repositories if you use some Arch based distro they sometimes have their own uh, own uh, repository maybe the chaotic AUR from Garuda which is like build service for some of the AU AUR packages and you have the AUR and you don't really need to worry about adding new repositories about like some uh, priorities But something will get some conflicts. Of course, in AUR everything may happen, so you should be careful with it. But overall, it's just way, way, way less headache to work with. So, what can I say other than I use Arch, by the way? Also, I'm on Wayland and everything works just fine. And I made a little cool script to start uh, Emac sessions from Wofi which is like a fork of Rofi, but for Wayland. But that's besides the point. So thank you for watching, for listening. And I just reminded myself, I just remembered, I wanted to say that there's no camera in this video. <laughs> <coughs> right at the beginning, but I forgot. So here you go, there's no camera but eventually it will be back so thank you for watching i hope it wasn't too like mm, complainy video and that you got something from the stuff i was talking about i mean something uh, good for you some some learn something let's say okay anyway this video is too long already, so thank you for watching, for listening, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye. I'm waving with the <laughs> with the cursor. <laughs> bye.